Welcome to Adult YPWW Lesson 8. Today's topic is Intercessory Prayer. The lesson text is coming out of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, verse 19, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. The memory verse is Luke chapter 22, verse 32. I will read the King James Version first and then the New International Version. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The New International Version But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Praying for others is one of the obligations arising from that great law making it impossible for us to live an independent and isolated life. We are members of one body. If one member suffers, all the members suffer. If one member is strong and healthy, all the members share the health and strength. We are not fighting a solitary battle. We belong to a great army. Therefore, we should pray and intercede for all involved in the spiritual warfare. Paul himself pleads first of all for supplication on behalf of all saints, that is, on behalf of all Christian believers without exceptions. Then he especially requests that the Ephesian church should pray for himself in that critical position in which he then was, that he might equip himself worthily when called upon to make his defense, and might bravely and effectively set forth the truth of the gospel. We think of Paul as the champion of the faith, However, while we remember how strong and versatile and full of resources he was, we do not quickly realize that he needed to ask for reinforcements of spiritual power through the earnest prayer of the Christian men and women he knew. Who can tell how much of the man's courage, energy, and serenity, which made him so glorious an example of a Christian missionary, may have come to him in answer to the intercession of saints, unknown and long forgotten. There are Christian people today whose lives are so far removed from excitement, agitation, and peril that they have no opportunities for winning great moral victories. Their powers are minimal, and they are not appointed to tasks of great difficulty and honor. Let them resolve to have their part in the righteousness of their comrades who face the fiercest dangers, and in the fame of the very chiefs and heroes of the great army of God. Let them pray for all the saints. Their prayers will give courage, endurance, and invincible fidelity to those struggling with ongoing temptations. By constant and earnest intercession for all saints, those living in quiet and obscure places may share the honors and victories of all their comrades. By their intercession, they may have some part in the praise of their holiness and some part in their final reward. For example, let us carefully note the significance of Apostle Paul's request for prayer from the Ephesians. Thus, immature Christians in Ephesus, trembling in their early faith, are asked to pray for the old warrior in Rome. He is now an ambassador in bonds, held in captivity in imperial Rome, and the Untried soldiers in Ephesus are asked to be intercessors for the stricken soldier far away. What does he want them to pray for? For me, that utterance may be given unto me to mark the absolute inwardness of that appeal. A poor enslaved person in Ephesus may, by his prayer, anoint the lips of a great apostle with grace and power. What a vista of powerful possibility! Do all congregations realize that privilege and service concerning their minister? For me, that utterance may be given unto me. Do I know that my prayers, obscure and nameless though they may be, can give utterance to a Paul, a Moses, or an Abraham? Do I realize that I can pour grace upon their lips? What a brave and splendid privilege! Am I using it? We then ask what happens when we pray for other people. Several things happen. It has been frequently found that when we pray for other people, we discover something we can do for them. When we pray for another person, our mind is full of that person in a sense, 
That means love. When we say, thy will be done, we must not mean that God is to do it, but Christ meant, here I stand ready to do it. We will then see how natural it is that when we pray for another person, the answer very often is to discover by ourselves some way to help them. We pray for others. We are thinking of them. We have the circumstances in our mind, their difficulty or their want, and thinking of it in that way. It frequently flashes across our mind that there is some way in which we can serve them. However, suppose there is no physical way in which you can serve them. Still, when you pray for them, you are making yourself a channel for the prayer of God, the power of God. God seeks to enter into the universe everywhere. He seeks to possess us and the person for whom we pray. And when he can find someone who will open the door for him, who will make a way for him, he comes. We all have the power to shut him out. You can make yourself a non-conductor so that God cannot get through you into the world. God comes into the world if a person is filled with love. And as St. John said, that is the same as being filled with God. That is why every saint makes God possible to the rest of the world. He has become a channel through which God enters the world again to possess it. When you pray for others, it is good consciously and deliberately to offer yourself as that point of contact, as that channel, into yourself of yourself and offer yourself to God as a means. You need to find out how he will use you. That is how great causes are helped. You cannot reach the leaders, perhaps, and yet by offering yourself as a channel for the will of God. You help purify the atmosphere and create the correct public opinion. You help that person with an invisible power. Here, we come across another difficulty. Do we have the power to make someone to do what we pray for, whether they want to or not? No, we cannot compel them. And that is why sometimes it takes so much more patience and love to pray for other people than oneself. Look at the case of Peter. Our Lord says he had prayed for him and was sure he would recover and help others. Our Lord prayed that Peter should not fail and his prayer was not answered in that respect. Peter did fail and our Lord knew he was going to. Prayer for others works just as the love of God works. It never coerces anyone. When shall we re realize that love can only work after the laws of its being? It is no use asking God to be loved and to work as though he were a force. Take any significant force in the material world and you will immediately realize that it is no use treating gas as though it were electricity or electricity electricity as though it were steam. Each has excellent power, but each works after the law of its nature, and love also works after the law of its nature, and that is how intercessory prayer works. God will not take the human freedom of your friends and force them to be what you like. Nevertheless, when you pray for them, you direct towards them the power and the love of God in a way that cannot be explained. We must remember that there is an essential distinction between intercession and mediation. Each ought to intercede for others. But we have one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There is a feeling that sometimes leads men to ask for the prayers of others. A sense that they are not good enough to address God or that he will be more likely to listen to other men who were supposed to have higher claims in his favor. To ask for the prayers of others from such motives as this is to send them to God while we remain away. It is making them mediators between us and God. When St. Paul asked for his disciples' prayers, it was not that they were better entitled to God's favor or more likely to be heard than he. We have special promises of mutual prayer, and we believe that the united prayers of Paul's brethren were influential in obtaining a more significant measure of the Holy Spirit for him. Mutual prayer of this kind does not keep anyone at a distance from God, but brings all nearer. Nothing can better enable us to realize the commun communion of saints. Nothing can more thoroughly make us feel that we are one body than if, instead of each striving to secure a salvation, we seek one for another. 
not only helping each other by counsel and active exertion, but also striving for one another in mutual prayer. If we only believe this, only thought it enough to try it, there would rise in our hearts a sense of power, not only to be ourselves better, but to make the world better so that nothing should seem impossible. The questions for today's lesson. Number one, define the word intercession. Number two, what does it mean to intercede for someone? Number three, name some people we are told to intercede for in 1 Timothy. Number four, for what reasons are we told to intercede for them? Number five, what group of people did Paul ask to pray for him? Number six, do we have the power to alter others' will through prayer? Number seven, what is the difference between intercession and mediation? The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.